Good night, everyone, and Merry Christmas. Please stand and join us in singing O Holy Night. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and ever pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit to be with all of you. Amen. Merry Christmas to you all. Today we're gathered here today to celebrate the birth of our Lord. And out of this beautiful tradition of our faith, that even though Christ was born on the 25th, since we couldn't hardly wait to celebrate it, our church invented these things called vigils. And so here we are at midnight because we couldn't wait to celebrate the birth of our Lord this day, at whatever hour it was. Vamos então começar por reconhecer os nossos pecados para assim podermos celebrar dignamente estes santos mistérios. Confessemos que somos pecadores. Eu confesso a Deus Todo-Poderoso e a vós, irmãos, que reis muitas vezes por pensamentos, palavras, atos e omissões. Por minha culpa, por minha grande culpa, peço à Virgem Maria, aos santos e santos, e a vós, irmãos, que reis por mim, a Deus Nosso Senhor. Deus Todo-Poderoso tenha misericórdia de nós, perdoe os nossos pecados e nos conduza à vida eterna.
Let us pray. O God, who have made this most sacred night radiant with the splendor of true light, grant, we pray, that we who have known the mysteries of the light on earth, of His light on earth, may also delight in the gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing. As they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them the pole on their shoulder and the rod of the taskmaster you have smashed, as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will burn as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, upon his shoulder dominion rests. Then name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord.
Leitura da Epístola do Apóstolo São Paulo a Tito Caríssimo, manifestou-se a graça de Deus Fonte de salvação para todos os homens Ensinando-nos a renunciar à impiedade e aos desejos montanos Para vivermos no tempo presente Com temperança, justiça e piedade aguardando a ditosa esperança e a manifestação da glória do nosso grande Deus e Salvador Jesus Cristo, que se entregou por nós para nos resgatar de toda a iniquidade e preparar para si mesmo um povo purificado, zeloso das boas obras. Palavra do Senhor. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus <clears throat> that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinus was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each in his own town. And Joseph, too, went up to Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of the family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped them and swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there was, rather, now there were shepherds in the region living in the fields, and keeping the night watch over their flocks. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, 
I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and laying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of heavenly hosts with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. On the Christmas Eve night, a night much colder than today, there was this husband and wife in which the wife always invited the husband to go to Mass even though she knew the answer. And so she asked him, do you want to go with Mass with me today? And he, of course, said, no, you know, faith and me don't go together very well. I'll stay home. And so she went off. The man was home, watching TV, waiting for his wife to come back from Mass. Then he heard a very loud thump. And he knew right away there was something on the window. They thought maybe it was children playing around or throwing things. So he goes out, turns on all the lights on the outside, and he sees these birds. And one of them, sure enough, flies right into the window again. He assessed the situation and said, they're cold. They want a place that's warm. That's probably why they're hitting this window. He was an animal lover, but he knew his wife was not going to like if he brought the birds into the living room. So he thought maybe of putting them in the garage. After all, she left in the car. So he opened up the garage and waited to see if the birds would go in there, and they weren't going. So then he thought about getting some bread, made some crumbs, put it on the floor, a little trail into the garage. They ate the crumbs, but they didn't go inside the garage. So then he tried to shoo them in by force, see if he could somehow get them in there. But they only flew up into the tree, and once he was finished, they came right back down. So he thought, if only if I was a bird, I would fly around with them, for a while and then go into the garage and they would follow me. That is very much what we're doing here today with the birth of Christ. Just as that man realized of Christ being one of us in all things but sin to lead us, that so too we can think even though analogy and all analogies for as good as they are are never good enough. But through analogy can we think then of God and his love for us that not only that he created us but that when we fell through our sin he would then enter into our human history as a person like us in all things but sin to teach, to govern, to sanctify, to lead us into this big garage of safety, which we call heaven. Christ who comes into our world, as he did, as a way of telling of God's love for us. Now, how is it that we react to God's love for us? And many times when we think of God's love, maybe it's not good enough, or maybe we want more. Or maybe we expect God to just do all, do everything and more than what he does. And if that becomes to be our expectation that God is supposed to do everything, then maybe at times we might also then be defrauded when something doesn't happen or doesn't go our way. How could it be? How could God do this? What is our reaction to God's love? And is that what really we would want? You know, Samuel Harris, a very famous militant atheist, very bright man for sure. 
of which I listen to his podcasts every once in a while. And one of his arguments against God or against the existence of God is that he says that if God was going to reveal himself to us as he did, supposedly the Bible, why wouldn't the Bible have such things as, for example, the cure for cancer or the cure for all kinds of other diseases or maybe thoughts on how to solve all of our problems? That of all the things that God would communicate to us, why wouldn't he communicate those things? Why wouldn't God made our life easy or, or easy? I think that's, that's a question that maybe the answer won't totally satisfy. But maybe we can think of like our parents. In that, would we want parents that never allowed us to fall from the bicycle? Would we want parents that would never allow us to get a scratch, to make a mistake? Would we want parents to be in our classrooms and tell us the right answer all the time? Would we want to win the lottery every single day? Would we want then everyone else to win the water lottery every single day? Would we want that life in which we can make no mistakes and everything always goes 100% well and according to our way? Would we want that? And the answer is probably not. You wouldn't want your parents to do that for you. So why do you want God to do that for you? Or maybe just as your parents allowed you to make mistakes so that you might learn and become stronger because of them, so maybe God also allows this world the way it is that we might make the best of it, no matter how it is that we do it. And then if we make the best of it, we're definitely doing the right thing. We think of another analogy in which there was a man that was looking for enlightenment, for truth. So he goes out into the woods so that God in the woods, in the bush, would show him something of enlightenment, of how to live a better life and how things to be better, looking for a sign. So he goes out into the woods, and there in the woods he sees, <clears throat> rather, he's in the woods, the first day he gets hungry, nothing really happens, and so he's ready to go home. And as he's walking home, he notices something quite incredible in that he sees a fox without its two front legs, and yet it looked healthy and fat. And so he thought, maybe this is the sign. I wonder what God is telling me through this fox with no front legs, and yet is somehow happy and satisfied and well-fed. So he's thinking about the sign. And as he is thinking, he hears this loud noise coming through the brush. He thinks right away it's a big animal, so he goes up a tree. And sure enough, it was a lion. A big, ferocious lion comes in with a piece of meat in its mouth, lays it in front of the fox, and goes away. And the man thought, surely this is a sign from God, but what could it mean? So he decides to stay there a little bit longer, another day. Now he's really hungry. And then he thinks maybe the sign is that God's going to take care of me no matter what. Everything is always going to be fine. I just need to wait for it. And so he waits in the bush. Three, four, five days go by. And now he's dying. But then a hunter comes by, notices him, gives him water gives him some food, and he comes back to his senses. And so he tells the hunter what happened and what he thought was the sign, but maybe it wasn't. And so the hunter asked him, but why did you think that was the sign? Why not think that God wanted you to be a ferocious lion, so by being a ferocious, strong, healthy lion, you might be able to help others? Why couldn't that be the sign? Why couldn't that, that be the sign? that God would come as poor as a baby child, a baby, totally dependent on others, God Almighty emptying himself so that we might become rich. How do we respond to that sign of God's love? Certainly, the way to respond to the sign of God's love is to love God in the same measure 
to love God in the same measure and to love all of those that he has also put into our lives. Loving the God we do not see by loving those whom we do see. And when we think about loving and love, one thing that is always true, everyone loves to be loved, but we don't always like to love other people. Isn't that the truth? We all love to be loved, just like forgiveness. We all love to be forgiven, but to forgive, not so much. So many times we can think that it's easy and a good person is one of which follows all, all the rules and does crosses all the I's and the T's and doesn't go to prison. There you go, a good person. It's easy to follow rules. It's much more difficult to be a loving person. A loving person. And not a loving person in which love, you know, the world doesn't have a clue what love is. Today we think that love means to accept everything. And that is anything but love. That is not love. And we know that people will say certain things and you know they don't mean it. It's just words that come out of their mouths to make themselves look smarter. That's all it is. And open-minded and all that stuff. If we really believed that we're supposed to be loving and accept everything, why is it that we don't forgive? We live in the world that supposedly says we need to accept everything, but nothing is forgiven and no one is forgiven. Because it's not true when it says that we need to love everything and love everyone. Just words that come out of people's mouths. Because if we really did believe that, it would be more understanding and more forgiving. And there isn't a lot of forgiveness going on in our culture and in our time. But rather, any little mistake right away, we want them fired. We want their head cuts off. Very little forgiveness because there is very little love. Authentic love is very much more seen than what we have here today. A father, a mother, a child. There would be no Christmas if not for Mary. There would be no Christmas if not for Aaron Joseph. There would be no Christmas if not for the baby Jesus. There would be no Christmas if not for the family. And this sign of God's love for us, that he would be born poor, humble, and totally at our mercy, so that through that, and we might become rich. So that hopefully we will want to be strong, not strong to get my way, but strong to help, to do to love, to serve. That Christ would come to make, that Christ would come to show God's love so that we might want and desire to authentically love, to risk to authentically love the other, to risk to imitate Christ our Lord. My friends, let us stand and let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things remain. And for us man, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. And for our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and his seat at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and this kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, 
who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. There's one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and to the world to come. And as we receive the great gift in Jesus Christ, our Lord, let us ask him for all of our greater needs. For the church of God, that Christ be born in our hearts and lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the family of nations, for people of all races and beliefs, for living signs of God's generous, creative love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For the hungry, the sick, that they be fed, healed, comforted by our loving hands, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the lonely and forgotten, those without family or friends, for love, companionship, and hospitality, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the children of the world, that they enjoy God's special blessings during this holy season, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For this parish, community that the mystery of Christmas lead us to great love of God and neighbor. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died, especially Antonio Florinda e Tony Lopes, and for our own intentions, which we now mention in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We make these in all prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the oblation of this feast day be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all of the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks of held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all of the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not a temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The 
body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Today, okay. as we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus, the children will be receiving their final gift. No more waiting. Will all the children please come forward and receive their Christmas gift? Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the Feast of the Redeemer's Nativity may, through an honorable way of life, become worthy of union with Him who lives and reigns forever and ever. So before we go, of course, we want to wish you, all of you, a Merry Christmas. May it be what you prayed for, for this Christmas of this year. And, uh, and thank you very much for coming to Mass at midnight. Probably why we didn't have too many kids bringing up, coming up for gifts, because it's one in the morning, probably. <laughs> Who knows? But thank you very much uh, for coming to Mass. And as the old Portuguese people say... Maria Christmas, Maria Christmas, <laughs> Maria Christmas to everyone. Have a great holiday. Today, what we're going to do, uh, maybe a little bit different than maybe you're accustomed, we're going to do the traditional kissing of the baby Jesus. So after the final blessing, the choir will play, and then anyone who would like, no obligation, of course, whatsoever, we're going to do the traditional Portuguese kissing of the baby Jesus. Some of those uh, purificators, we put a lot of, um, a lot of the, um, that stuff for your hands. <laughs> Hand sanitizer. <laughs> we put uh, a lot of it soaked in them to help. But here's the truth. If there was a supermodel out there giving free kisses on the mouth to anyone, <laughs> I guarantee you there would be a line from here to Turlock and they wouldn't be worried. <laughs> They wouldn't be worried about getting a germ. <laughs> so why are we worried about kissing the image of the basic baby Jesus? Now, of course, as a reminder, just in case there's someone who is not Catholic, we as Catholics don't worship images. It's just an image made out of whatever material it's made out of. We kiss it just like I would kiss the picture of my father or of my mother. Nothing more as a reminder. Images don't save us. They're just images, reminders, and nothing more. But it is a beautiful sign, as if we were there, to also come and worship our Lord. And so let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of His Son has driven darkness from the world, and by the glory of birth has illuminated this most holy night, drive far from you the darkness of vice and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. Amen. May God who willed that the great joy of his son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel. Fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. Amen. And may God, who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, 
fill you with the gift of His peace and favor and make you shares with the church in heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen. come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Before the, the last part, we're like also traditional Portuguese tradition, we're also going to take a little collection if you would like to give. And this year it's going to go, I forget the name of the house, I'm sorry, but there is a, a home in, in um, what's it called? Joseph's, Joseph's house. Joseph's house. Justin's house. house in Turlock that takes care of or helps women in need uh, very much like the Blessed Very Mother in her hour of need. So that's where it's going. Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. sounding joy repeat the sounding joy repeat